Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob, and as I always say, I am here for customer success. I'm here for you all to get you acclimated utilizing Floor Planner as you develop your technique. Um, today, we're going to be addressing business and enterprise accounts specifically to talk about the groups feature. Now, we've had groups feature out there for a while, but now there are abilities to have named groups um, that can be reused. And also as business and enterprise accounts, you have the ability to go ahead and share those named groups across your companies. So your administrators have the power to go ahead and take those named groups and go ahead and place them into library category classes and then have them available for your team members. Again, company-wide. So let's take a look um, and why, you know, would we be doing this? There's a lot of different reasons. You know, you have your individual objects that you're certainly utilizing inside Floor Planner, but the ability to go ahead and group them. Right now, we have the ability to make a temporary grouping and utilize them on our screens. We could go ahead and just, you know, select a chair, um, maybe hold our shift key and select the other chair over here and hold the shift key and maybe take the table. So with those three items selected, you've been able to go ahead and use your mouse and just drag them around to another location. You also have the ability to duplicate what you have highlighted. You can flip, you can flip vertically or horizontally. You can rotate 90 degrees. You can delete what you selected. And also over here on the left-hand sidebar, Depending on what you've selected, you can choose to uh, narrow down the categories of furniture, surfaces, walls, whatever's in your selection window. And again, duplicating, flipping, and such over here on the left-hand tab, and also the rotation, uh, not just 90 degrees. You can rotate to any additional degree or uh, even raise from floor if you needed to. So the benefits of grouping as a temporary grouping as it is right now, um, comes in quite handy for the functions of space planning. Yet the named groups that we're talking about, actually creating a group to be reused is a really cool feature that you have now. I'm gonna hit my undo button up here, put everything back the way it was. And I've got a few different examples up here to talk about. Um, certainly you may have a, a dining room table that you have certain chairs. It could be a host hostess chair on the ends to be with a different type of dining room chair. And it's something you want to reuse in the future or an entire grouping of furniture in specific locations and specific accessories. Um, or something I really admire is the idea of putting together accessorizing, to accessorize an entire shelf unit, because it takes time to do that, to go ahead and, you know, finish out your model that you've created inside Floor Planner and say, well, I want to put some books on there and some some picture frames and some uh, small plants. Uh, it takes time to grab those little pieces and put them into place. But what if it was all blocked together? Maybe you had a few different versions of what an assortment could look like on different shelves. Maybe it's a shelf A, a shelf B, a shelf C, and then name them and always have them available inside your library to just drag and drop them whenever you needed them. So how would that work? So we've talked about the temporary grouping and utilizing them as you're working in your 2D views, but how about the named groups? Uh, even before we even get to the point of even sharing them, but to name them. I, there's a couple different ways you can select your multiple items. Yes, I've selected a chair and I could hold my shift key and select another chair and hold my shift key and select another chair and hold my shift key and select another chair and hold my shift key and select the table. So those items have been selected and I can go ahead and create them as a group and name that group for future use. Another way that you can select items on your screen, which comes in really handy, is to utilize your shift key and your mouse click and drag a selection window. So if I hold my shift key and my mouse click, I can drag out a selection window over top of the same items and it'll get identify all of them, either which way. Um, with them being selected, I'm gonna go ahead and create a named group. So create a named group over here and we're gonna go ahead and name it something special. We'll call it uh, Dining Bob for right now, just so we know what we've named. And we're gonna hit submit. 
what we've just done is created an actual group named inside our library. Uh, myself as a sub user of the account, uh, if you, as you're multiple users, obviously business enterprise account, this would be for your sub users use and they would have that inside their dedicated library. Yet sometimes you might want to go ahead and share those with others. So we're gonna go ahead and take a peek at this. So we've created the group. Now there's all the items that are in the group. And well, what, where is that? Uh, if you go over to your objects tab, as you typically would looking for items, which is where all your furnishings are, you can go into the groups tab at the top where it says a little notation of their new um, groups. And there it is, we called it Dining Bob. So I could go ahead and take the same, much like you would grab an object, now it's a group of objects named specifically as you customized it or your sub users did. And you can just drag and drop it back onto your model and you're off and running. Now, that's the individual sub user use of it. But what if you wanted to be sharing a specific group that your administrator has created and you want to share something specific across the board, a branded look or appearance of specific items, be it, uh, as I said, a accessorized shelf, a dining room assortment, a sectional sofa, or an entire room, as we have down here, with specific distances already predetermined to drag and drop back in, but have this available to all of your sub users. Well, we've just gone ahead and made this one dining bob over here, kind of cool. Um, so I'm gonna get out of this project and actually go into the administrators function of the specific account, for example. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard over here, which will exit me out of that particular project. When you're in your admin settings, logged in as your administrator, you can go down to your admin settings down here. And you can see in here any uh, settings in here for your group libraries, product group libraries, good product group libraries. And there is a group library that I've already created called Dining. Uh, you can always add another one in here if you care to. Um, just create a new name up here and say add to library. So I created a subclass in here by doing this here. And I created one called Dining. So it's a library, a subclass of dining. So you can house multiple group pieces, different collections um, by these categories, which will make it easier for your team members and your sub users to go ahead and identify uh, how to find these particular groups that have been shared. So the subclassification of dining, great. Now all we need to go ahead to do is take a peek at the actual group that we created. So if we go down to products, inside products as an administrator searching, these would be all of the custom products or products that you've uh, gained certain access to that you share across the board for all of your sub users. And then go ahead and take a look at the groups. Well, sure enough, there was a group created as we did, Dining Bob. Well, we can take that group and identify it. And then we could say, hey, since we did create a subclassification, a library classification for it, we can go into our library. I've only made one. So there it is called dining. Or if you had multiples in there, you just select if there's a living room set, dining room set, et cetera, um, however you choose to name them. And I'm going to say I'm going to place this group as called Dining Bob inside this subclassification of the library called dining. With that being placed in there, right now it's for the single user. This is where you can share your group inside that library classification across the board for all of your sub users. So you as an administrator can, like I said, brand for your company specific uh, collections or groups um, with all of your sub users. If you select shared instead of just single user, this will be shared across company-wide. The cost for such a share is one credit per group per month. So once we hit shared, we're gonna go ahead and close that to accept it. And now that is a shared group across your company. Uh, if you ever wanna do a search in here for any of your other groups, you can 
in your pull down menu here, say, do I have private that I'm searching for, or am I just looking for shared? We've only created one, so it's it is shared, but you can actually view based on the classifications that have been created. So if we go back to the projects again, just real quick, and take a look at my example out there. I mean, how handy does this come in that if all of a sudden, you know, like I said, for the accessories, I really like this, that this particular group up here, maybe I was going to call this shelf one as a collection. I can just, you know, use my shift key, make a selection window over those particular items and go ahead and create a group and go ahead and call this out as shelf A. Uh, accessory, so say shelf play as a plan, say sub it, submit it, and it's been created. And these are the items that are identified in this particular shelf unit. And again, we can go back to the administrator. We can share that across the company wide or as a sub user, the sub user would be able to go ahead and go into their objects and go into groups. And there's that shelf play. So I can just drag this in. Next time I want to use this again, and maybe I need another one of them. I can go back over there and drag another one in if I care to. So comes in really, really handy to speed up your creation inside Floor Planner and also um, set that branding or common thread throughout your entire company for collections as you, as an administrator, would see all of your sub utilized sub users taking advantage of having that library available to them. Hope you enjoyed this for today. I just wanted to get that information out to you about groups and how shared groups function um, within your platform currently. Until the next time, uh, enjoy your experience with Floor Planner. And I will catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Thanks.